Hi guys, welcome to the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at the Minox 35 MB. So this little camera has a phenomenal reputation. It's a German-made camera. It was built from 1974 to uh, as far as 2004. And, uh, it's a tiny little camera. It folds up uh, with a little drawbridge contraption here. It's released by this by this button here, as you can see. Now, some people really like that, and some people think um, uh, are not that crazy about it. Uh, and the reason for that is, you see, it's nice and compact. It's basically the size of a pack of cigarettes or something like that. And when you open it up, it kind of does that to the camera. It kind of makes it uh, bigger and wider and, and bulkier. But uh, I tend to disagree with that. I, I didn't have a problem with that whatsoever. I think it's uh, it's just fine. I mean, it's only like this when you're actually using it and putting it up to your eye, and it's super quick to get, you know, to, to put it away. It's actually yeah, it's a fun camera to use. It's very simple. It's a zone focusing camera. You don't you don't uh, have any kind of help uh, in terms of the uh, focus. You just kind of have to figure it out on your own. Just kind of have to look, guesstimate. Okay, this is five feet away, eight feet away, whatever. Um, the the f stops here the aperture are clickless um, it you know fine it's it's a pretty easy to read scale there's a, a depth of field scale on there as well I'll show you a little bit closer up as you can see you just uh, hit this button here to uh, to pop open and reveal the lens the viewfinder and uh, the, you know the light sensor the CDS cell and everything that, that resides inside that strip this glass strip in front of the lens all right, so you can see the the outer ring here. This is where you focus. All right, and you just pretty much have to ballpark it. But the majority of pictures are going to take place at infinity. And then you also factor in the uh, the uh, aperture that you're that you're actually using. But uh, here's your depth of field scale. I'm sure you guys know how depth of field works. The center dot is for your f 2.8, which is what this lens is. It's a 35 millimeter 2.8. So that's your depth of field uh, in that red zone there for when it's set at 2.8, and then you know it, uh, of course it increases as you go on down to uh, to the smallest f-stop. Now take a look at this funky um, iris on this thing. If you look at the center of the lens, you see how that looks. It opens and closes like in a diamond pattern. That's a little unusual. I've never really seen that before. I guess that's got to do with just the tiny size of the lens itself. Um, this LED here is for the self timer it, uh, and I'll show you that there's a switch in the back here that reveals the T when you slide it see that you reveal it reveals a T when you slide it you hit your your shutter button here and then you're gonna get a bunch of um, you know blinking and it'll actually speed up the blinking when it gets closer and speed it up even more when it's about to take the picture it's like a strobe effect there all right and then yeah you heard that shutter it's a very quiet little shutter it doesn't uh, it hardly makes any noise at all it's hard to tell sometimes when it's even open a lot of these cameras are uh, are notorious for having shutter problems the newer ones like the MB and the ML seem to be a little bit better so they'll actually the shutter will actually click um, but it won't actually take a picture you'll see what I'm talking about Okay, this camera works. Um, you can get a very similar noise. You saw this shutter open and close, and it's fairly dim in here, so that's why it's, uh, it's a slower speed. You, set, you see this one open and close, but uh, there's a lot of them that'll make the same noise, but the shutter will never actually open. I researched it a little bit. It's a really common problem with the Minox 35s, and, but it's also pretty easily fixed. You can actually fix it yourself. There's a lot of folks that are give that'll sell these things at a really cheap price, you know, forty or fifty bucks, because they think the shutter is, is broken. But in fact, uh, if you and I'll, I'll show you just really quickly, because this isn't like a repair video, but right here you see these two screws. Okay, these two screws hold a, a little arm, an actuating arm that opens and closes the shutter. You know, it kind of moves in, in that direction every time you click on the shutter. You can't see the arm because it's under this dust cover here. This dust cover removes by hand or, you know, maybe pry a little screwdriver in there. 
uh, remove the dust cover, you'll see a, the silver actuating arm. You loosen these two screws and you can adjust the arm uh, in this direct, towards this direction. If you adjust it too far, then the shutter will sometimes just stay open uh, and not close. But if you just adjust it just a hair, because and you know that's typically all it takes. It just it just falls out of adjustment just slightly. I didn't I didn't use any machine or anything to you know to to check if it was correctly aligned. I just moved it a hair, and it's been working perfectly. I've run several rolls of film through this, and it works just fine without any issues. But that's um, if you if you look online, and I'll see if I can find the link to um, you know to uh, the, the site, it was actually on Flickr, it was a Flick, one of the Flickr Minox channels that had that information. Alright, so moving on, the bottom plate, you have a tripod socket, which it looks like it actually has plastic threads, I could be wrong about that, but uh, there's your tripod socket, there's your film rewind release button. Now this, uh, this panel here is another little thing with this camera, this panel is painted right and uh, it generally is is scratched up it's really unusual to find one like this that has zero scratches on it because it actually scratches up pretty easily um, and the you know of course these are your ISOs or, and your ASA scale and it's got a uh, you know just a wheel right here that uh, that you can turn this is your release uh, to, to open up the back like I just showed you here the entire back comes off Kind of like the uh, the Raleigh 35s, uh, kind of like that camera. The film is really easy to load. It's got um, these pressure uh, deals right here, whatever you want to call these, uh, that that apply pressure to the film. So it, the film takes up pretty much on the first try, just about every time. Um, this is a, a double stroke camera. Uh, double stroke film advance and uh, I'll show you that it's two short strokes and now your shutter's cocked but yeah two strokes to advance one frame and that's because of the tiny body um, you know and you see the the lens assembly going back and forth there uh, they're, these are really well built cameras you look at them and they're, they're tiny and they're plastic so you think that oh yeah they're you know cheap old plastic cameras but they are really really well engineered this plastic is fiberglass reinforced so it's not that cheap feeling plastic it's kinda like the plastic you might feel like in a BMW or a Mercedes or something it's um, it's really well built the the tolerances and everything are are tight um, I mean if you just look at the pure the, the quality of the materials used here there there's like no scratches whatsoever on this on the surface of this camera. If, I mean, if you just look at it, there's just no scratches at all. And this this is a camera from the, probably the late 70s, early 80s. And you can see how clean and clear and free of uh, defects and scratches the body is. All right, the, um, the drawbridge, which this thing is nicknamed, um, opens and closes well. I've never seen one have a problem with that. You would think that this whole thing might, you know, cause a problem. A light leak or a malfunction but uh, I've had five of these cameras and I have n have not seen one yet that's got a problem with that uh, whole lens assembly that pops out the the viewfinder is kind of interesting also if you look at it here you can pretty much see the a reflection of the camera that's uh, filming this right now um, that's because this is uh, I don't know if it's intentional or not but this viewfinder in, a, in effect is a selfie mirror um, you can easily see yourself in the uh, in this reflective surface of the viewfinder whenever you like take a picture of yourself you can see yourself in there pretty easily so that's kind of a neat uh, side effect I don't know if they intended it or not it's probably more than likely it's just a coating um, selfies weren't really a thing when this camera was out but uh, you know nowadays it, it actually is uh, it, it actually works really well you can actually see the outline of your body and what I'll do is I'll wave my hand uh, to just to see the hand my hand moving in there and then, and then that way I can kind of figure out, you know, where I am in the picture. Uh, this battery cover here uh, is a Duracell, it's like a 28L. Some of the 
cameras take a 27 um, L or 27 X there's different ones um, there's even a, a company that um, because there was a bit of an issue with compatibility the original camera uh, or the original battery for this camera was a 5.6 volt and they're just not in production anymore they are uh, I guess mercury batteries or something that was bad for the environment so they stopped making them and the replacement were uh, they were 6 volts so there's companies that um, made like little adapters or whatever but uh, I don't know I, I use this one um, they last years and I, I haven't had any problem uh, with it at all but there, there was a little issue going on with these batteries that uh, you know that created the need for for like an adapter to be created uh, but uh, again not it's a non-issue for me the uh, let's look at the top plate like some of these uh, minoxes have a more contoured top plate this one's kind of like a squared off one uh, some of them are a little little more contoured um, where you know the edges aren't squared right here um, the, the some of the later models were looking look like this and they had the button to release the the, the trap door here the drawbridge uh, some of the older ones didn't that you just kind of pull them open another uh, little idiosyncrasy the uh, shutter release button on this one you can see it's kind of like a reddish blood orange color some of them are flat out orange uh, yellow you know they, they change the color on them any time they came out with a new model um, I guess just a, w a way to kind of distinguish the models at a glance the um, cable release uh, insert is right there it's a threaded insert for the cable release and this went from you know the middle of the button to here on the different models so it's, you know they they put them in both places the uh, film counter window is really really easy to read like in, in pretty much all lights because it's a nice bright background with a with a good size uh, dark number uh, and that's that's kind of important to me because there's a lot of these little cameras that you cannot see the the film advance to save your life you just can't you know it just doesn't show up all right um, up top also this is your the battery check okay and on this particular model since it has LEDs in the viewfinder uh, you'll see an LED under the letters BC light up for battery check on the the cameras that have a needle, the needle will jump up to just above one one twenty fifth of a second, telling you that that's the correct, uh, you know, that the battery's good. This little guy here, this switch, is for backlight compensation, which I'm really glad to see on this kind of camera. Uh, it gives you twice the, the shutter speed, and when I say twice, I mean twice as long. Okay, just to compensate for the for the any you know harsh backlight. Um, the lenses in this camera are really good. They've all been pretty much the same lens. Uh, I think they may have gone from from single coating to multi coating. Um, the color um, Minotar, the, this color Minotar lens is a sharp, sharp little lens. It's a surprisingly good resolving lens, um, especially compared to some of the other cameras in this category. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. That's one of the strong suits. That's, I think that's one of the things that keeps people coming back to this camera because it's not the most reliable uh, camera with that little shutter issue, but the lens I think makes up for it. And if you get one that works, and you know you can just run with it and, and use it for as long as it's working. And like I said uh, earlier, it's real, they're really not that hard to fix. And I think once they're adjusted, they they they're good for for quite a while. But yeah, the it's got a nice nice uh, decent lens in there. It's a 35 millimeter 2.8. Um, and I'll show you another, the other thing that really, uh, attracted me to this camera, uh, another reason I really chose this camera, uh, as a, as one of my favorites is this item right here. Okay. And this crazy looking thing is the Minox 35 MT or MT 35 flash. And as you can see, it's a bounce flash, which is unheard of, and you know, for these little cameras. And you can also see it's a pretty big unit in relation to the to the camera itself. What it does, in effect, is it doubles the size. Now I gotta zoom out a little bit. 
in effect it doubles the size of the of the camera as you can see it also adds the shutter button here um, that marries up with the shutter button down there um, it's an automatic flash it's a thyris thyristor thyristor however you say that the, meaning that it has variable output now you can't control the output but you can um, you know it, the flash reads how much light is necessary and it gives you the proper exposure and uh, one thing I really like about it it takes four AAA batteries all right so it, it charges and recharges really quickly it, it, it's really good with uh, with bounce because um, you're not always sure if your bounce photo is going to be properly exposed so it's good to do this LC quick light check and you get the green light and say okay I've got a good exposure then you can go ahead and take the picture right there okay all right so yeah anyway it's uh, just to show you how this unit works really quickly um, here's your there's your on off switch with your battery check button or, or battery check indicator there on that LED this is your charge LED or uh, light and, and I already showed you what these two mean this this the red tells you you've got a bad ex uh, underexposed and the the um, green tells you you've got a proper exposure LC is your light check button on this scale here you set your uh, ISO so and once your once your film speed is set then you go ahead and set the aperture that you want to work with right there on that bottom scale let's see if we can get a little film that's your the aperture you wanna you wanna work with so let's say we set it for example to to 2.8 right here okay we got it set to 2.8 so that lets you know that you've got a working range uh, based on your 2.8 based on your 400 I'll set that back in place 400 ISO film speed f 2.8 f-stop and the green tells you in uh, in feet or meters in that center scale there that you can operate anywhere from uh, what is that 40 60 feet uh, as far as 60 feet and as close as uh, 10 feet all right so obviously if you want to get closer than that then you just shut down your lens uh, in this case f8 will let you get as close as uh, four feet and of course once you set that oops, uh, of course once you set that you have to go here and set your your uh, aperture to the correct setting okay otherwise it's it's all for nothing okay guys so to sum things up I uh, think the the best part about this camera probably is the user experience um, it's a fun camera to use it's it's uh, very direct and to the point uh, there's not a lot of fiddling around necessary to take great photos this lens uh it, it's just a phenomenal lens it's super sharp i mean it, it this thing punches way above its its weight class if you will um full frame negatives super sharp optics really easy to use really really compact uh, and it's just super fun to use um the the minox 35 series of cameras actually had a historical society it had a fan club I mean, you know, it, it had a huge following. Anybody who was anybody back in the in the day had one of these. Uh, Andy Warhol had one of these. There's a lot of celebrities that that uh, picked these cameras up, and you know, these cameras would make their their cameo uh, appearances in different movies and and whatnot. So, in any case, um, fun camera to use, uh, great optics. Go get one. The Minux 35.